I don't know what you're up to. But I'm going to tell you it's going to stop right now. No, it's not going to stop. It's going to go on and on until you face up to your responsibilities. What responsibilities? I'm pregnant. I'm going to have our child. Alex, that's your choice, honey. That has nothing to do with me. That's just one of the memorable roles that assures Michael Douglas a place in movie history. Now he's making history of a different sort, and he's in conversation with our Moraka. That theater was here when I was here, 60 years ago. It's been a long time since he was a student here, but on the campus of University of California, Santa Barbara, Michael Douglas still knows his way around. This used to be a, this was a World War II uh, military marine base, for, so it was all filled with like barracks. The theater with his name on it is a new addition. This is the most expensive lobby that you're ever going to find. <laughs> I think it's appropriate that it's under the uh, men's room and the women's room. <laughs> but when Douglas was actually enrolled here, he didn't have the same sense of direction. And getting to my third year in school, they called me into the counselor's office and they said, uh, you have to declare a major. I said, I don't know, man, I think, uh, and I thought, well, I thought theater would be easy. I can't say I was had any big burning desire, but I thought, well, maybe I know something about it. My mother's a stage actress, my father's an actor, and so I reluctantly started. Well, it's getting to be a problem. His mother was actress Diana Douglas, seen here in 1955's The Indian Fighter, opposite Michael's father, the legendary Kirk Douglas. I made myself a promise, Grixis. I swore that if I ever got out of this place, I'd die before I'd watch two men fight to the death again. At first, Michael didn't make quite the same impression as his parents. Did you perform in this space? Oh yeah, right here on this, on this stage with my little waste basket right off stage. I used to get sick every time. I had terrible stage fright. Right. It's terrible stage fright. And uh, blah. And then, dive and come on out and give it my all. But that unpleasant taste was soon replaced by the sweet smell of success. How are you, Nurse Ratchet? I'm happy to be back. In 1976, Douglas won an Oscar for producing One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. In 1988, he took home another one for his performance in Wall Street. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. On both sides of the camera, Douglas has shown uncanny instincts for choosing projects that meet the moment. His Gordon Gecko came to personify the avarice of the 1980s. An accident in a nuclear power plant. I don't know the 1979's The China Syndrome, about the dangers of nuclear power, hit theaters only 12 days before the Three Mile Island disaster. So it would seem his latest project is an outlier. Monsieur Dr. Franklin de Philadelphia. Oh, what on earth are you meant to be? An American. Why did you want to play Ben Franklin? Wow. Um, I guess I've never done any period pictures. So uh, that was part of the reason. In the series Franklin, streaming next month on Apple TV+, Plus, Douglas plays Benjamin Franklin during his eight-year tenure in Paris. That's where the Founding Fathers spent most of the Revolutionary War, petitioning France for aid in the fight against the British. How long must we stay? Until we win France to our side and secure our independence. Or we are hanged. But while 18th century France certainly qualifies as period, Douglas sees the series as every bit as contemporary as his other work. I mean, for me, the series is such a reminder of, of how fragile democracy is. When you start thinking about the time we first created our constitution um, and to see the kind of shape that we're in now, it's a reminder. The success of the revolution was by no means assured. Had the Americans failed, the would-be founders would have been hanged. Franklin, America's first diplomat, understood the need to go slow and steady with the French. You know, in, and there's a quote in the show, it's, it's a diplomacy must never be a siege, but a seduction. Of Passy. Je suis enchanté. 
and he got in a lot of trouble with his fellow Congress members, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and a couple of others, because it took eight years while he was over here to achieve what he wanted to. Do they mean to attack us? <laughs> no, they mean to see me. They have it in their heads that I invented electricity. Who am I to dissuade them? It was worth the wait. Benjamin Franklin secured the support of the French. Their money and arms were critical to the survival of the American Republic. Franklin left France at the age of 79, the current age of the man sitting in front of me. Ben Franklin had one hell of a third act. I mean, the last third of his life was the most productive, by many accounts, his happiest period. Is that something that inspires you? Yeah, this has been a, a, a great time for me, but I've been, I've been very fortunate. Uh, Catherine and I have been together, it'll be 25 years uh, come this year. Douglas met actress Catherine Zeta-Jones in 1998 at a film festival. While Franklin took years to woo France, Douglas worked a little faster. On your first date with Catherine, you said to her, You did your homework, Mo. I <clears throat> well, I blurted it out, I'm going to be the father of your children. Okay, now, now Go on. you were in your mid-late 50s at this point. Yeah. When you said that, did you think, wait a minute, do I really want to have children at this age? Uh, with Catherine Zeta-Jones, yeah, 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 <laughs> I think so, yeah, oh yeah, I think we could do that. If you twist my arm, oh, that's far enough, okay, <laughs> that be fine. They're the parents of Dylan and Karis, who are half-siblings to Cameron, Douglas's son from his first marriage. Michael Douglas's children and his film work are his legacy as is this stretch of land down the coast from his alma mater. I have to say this is just a, a lousy view. <laughs> the Douglas Family Preserve in Santa Barbara is today a favorite spot for dog walkers, recreational paragliders, and the man himself. I read about this in the paper. They were trying to save this spot here. So I just signed up and they said, if you, you know, contribute X, you named the park after you. 60 years after he reluctantly stepped on stage, Michael Douglas is looking out, feeling very much at ease. And one of the joys I get is when people recognize you and say, hey, th thanks for the park, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's great. So to see it now and to see the importance means a lot.